Sunday morning and welcome to worship services at Pilgrim Branch M.B. Church, 4033 Highway 471, Brandon, in the land of Goshen Springs, where if you are in need of refreshment, you should come. I'd well, like to say welcome to all worship services and a happy Grandparents Day to all of our grandparents out there. You know, the scripture said that children's children are a crown to the aged. So all of you of grandparents, take time, spend some time with them, talk to them, because regardless, whatever it is, you are their crown. And, and I encourage the grandparents to, to be like what Paul told Timothy. He talked about Timothy's fate. And he said it first dwelt in his mother and his grandmother. So I encourage all our grandparents of anything you can give to your grandchild, it's that's the faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This time you bow your heads for a moment of prayer. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity and privilege we have to come before you, Father. We say thank you for our grandparents, Father. We thank you for your spirit that you've placed in them, Father, and immense your faith, Father, so they may pass it down to our children's and our children's children's and our children's children's children. We just ask your spirit to be present with us, Father, as we lift you up to this world. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, let everyone say amen. 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 Isaiah 46 verses 4 through 5 Even to your old age and gray hairs I am he I am he who will sustain you I have made you and I will carry you I will sustain you and I will rescue you With whom you will compare me or count count me equal to to whom you will liken me in that and that we may be compared For the sacrifices known and unknown, and for the lessons from the generations, we had we heard you. You have pouty arms, lips, and crossed arms. Work, work, you. Your love roots deep into our souls, nourishing us with compassion and strength. Grandparents that are no longer with us have left behind a will to keep rising and achieving. Today we have something special for you to come to church to receive, just a little token to show our love and appreciation. Happy Grandparents Day, you are fantastic. Grandparents, drive up to the church parking lot to receive your give today between 11 and 12.
Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Fill me up. I had a friend one time who, 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 who back in back in Charlotte, he would always say, "My cup is full, and so full I'm drinking out of my saucer." In other words, we're living in the overflow. Can anybody say amen? Amen. 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 Good morning to you. Welcome morning. again to Pilgrim Branch Missionary Baptist Church in Goshen Springs, beautiful Goshen Springs, Mississippi. Amen. We want to say that we are so glad that you allowed us to come into your homes this morning and to praise the Lord with you as you sit in your comfort and got your family together and all. We just want to say we thank you for taking the time to share with us this morning yes. as we go in worship and to the word of God. Yes. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you again for this wonderful, wonderful day that you've blessed us in. We thank you, Lord God, that you kept us all through last night, all through times past, and you brought us to this point. Lord, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you for your loving care. Now, Lord God, as we gather all over this nation this morning, Lord God, in your presence, may your Holy Spirit fill us this morning, fill us afresh and anew, so that we may hear what thus say the Lord. Now, Lord, as for me, I'm no great preacher, Lord, I'm, I, I have problems talking sometimes, but Lord God, I know that there's one who's preaching right now who is greater than me. So I say, Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Have your way. Fill me up, Lord. Fill me up. Now may I speak with clarity and understanding so that the hearer can hear and be blessed by the word of God. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I'm so glad to be here this morning in your presence, Lord God. We just thank you so much. With all the stuff that's going on, you know, Sometimes people t will turn away and, and not come to God when they, he's the one that they really, really need. I'm not going to be long. We have you Sunday. And my little brothers and sisters, I know they ain't got, they only hear no half hour, two hour sermon this morning, do you kid? Amen. They sung so beautifully, so we're going to make this message short and let, let them go and let you get back to your coffee this morning and, and your donuts or scrambled eggs or whatever. But now let's praise the Lord together. There is a word from the Lord. Amen. Take your Bibles, your computerized Bible, your phone, your iPhone, iPads, or paper, whatever you have, and go with me as quickly as you can to the chapter of Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, and there to the sixth chapter, starting at verse 30. This is a very familiar passage of scripture. We're going to get into it and let the word of God speak to us. Verse 30 says, Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more close you? Oh, you of little faith. Therefore, do not worry, saying, What shall I eat? What shall I drink? Or what shall I wear? For, your, for these things the Gentiles seek after. Your heavenly Father knows that you need these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all of these things shall be added unto you. The word of God for the people of God. The people of God said amen. 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 This morning I just want to give you a command. That is keep Jesus first. Keep Jesus first. In this world that we're living in today there are so many things going on i don't have to rehearse them to you you know even from the smallest to the largest we've all been touched by the things that are happening in the world today the problem is that we sometimes get so concerned with the things that are going on around us we forget the most important thing of all and that's 
keeping Jesus first. We see all of the sickness and diseases and the political turmoil and we'll have the tendency sometimes to want to turn away and turn to other gods. Gods of money, gods of politics, gods of neighbors and gods of friends, people that we'll put before Jesus in our priorities. You know, I would pray more in the morning, but I got to hurry up and get to work because they're looking for me on the job. Not knowing if it wasn't for Jesus, you wouldn't have that job. Well, I don't have time to take out before I got to go to school and pray because I got to get my clothes together. I got to get my gown on. I got to get my fix together. Amen? But if it wasn't for Jesus who gave your parents the opportunity to purchase those for you, you wouldn't have clothes to put on. Jesus said, don't worry about that. Say, I got you. I got you. Let's get to our text. Our text this morning says that Jesus was teaching and preaching and healing. That's what Jesus do. Amen? Matthew chapter 5, chapter 6, and chapter 7 records probably the, the longest sermon that Jesus preached in the scriptures. He was going about, he's been filled with the Holy Ghost now, he's empowered to do ministry, and he's selecting people to get into the ministry with him, choosing his disciples, and, and he's got a great crowd of witnesses following, following after him. So many that he desires to teach them, so he goes up onto a high hill and began to teach them. And he said, blessed be. In these three chapters of scripture, you have the whole course of what Christian life should be. How a Christian should live. He talks about what you should be, that we are the source of the earth, how blessed you are, blessed be. And he tells, gives us all of these recipes of how the Christian life should go. In the middle of these three chapters, he kind of takes a pause here. Right in the middle, in the middle of chapter 6, which is in the middle of these three chapters, he says, don't worry. Don't worry. Well, why would he say don't worry? Well, the, isn't things all right? He's got all these people following. But now, you must understand that this is a troubled time for Israel, just like it, we are living in troubled times today. They were living in troubled times then. The whole country was under the oppression of Roman authority. Everybody had to do what the Romans said. Everybody had to fall under that rule. Now here comes this guy along talking about a new religion. Now if I get involved with this, I'm going to lose friends. I might get put out of my family. I might lose my child. Then I won't have the money to buy my food, to buy my clothes, all these things that I need. But in the middle of that, Jesus says, don't worry. Don't worry. He says, I got this. He's saying to you this day, don't worry about the pandemic. Don't worry about the politics. Don't worry about the economy. I got this. But I just want you to do one thing. That is, seek after me. Amen? You see, Jesus says, don't worry about what you're going to wear because your father, heavenly father knows that you need these things. Now, he says in another place, now, if he's a good heavenly father, if you ask for bread, he wouldn't give you a rock. If you ask for a, a fish, he wouldn't give you a spider. So you have a good God. He will supply all I need. But at first, the first thing is to follow after and seek Jesus. Now, I know that many of you are Christians, born again and all that, and you say, well, I've got Jesus in my life. The question is, is he in the right position in your life? Is he number one in your life? Amen? We have to put Jesus in the proper order of things. 
and keep him there. Amen? Amen. Jesus says, put me first and I'll work out everything else. To keep Jesus first in your life, you must realize certain things about who Jesus is and what he did and what he's doing. For, for the first thing, we keep Jesus first because we want to honor the Father. Amen? We want to honor God, so we put him in first place. We honor God. Now, we can't easily get off. You know, uh, the scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31 tells us, whatever you do, do to the glory of God. Amen? So all that we do should please God. Now, God should be first in everything, and first in our relationship, first in our, 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 our uh, families, first in everything. We put him in the forefront. The problem is we want to put Jesus in an isolated room over there and call on him when we need it. Even us good Christians, even us good Christians who want to to, to really please God, sometimes we'll get confused and begin to categorize Jesus in our daily life. Amen? You know how you line up those boxes in your life? You got, you got that Jesus box, and, and you got that family box, and you got that church box, and you got that, you got that recreational box, and that entertainment box, and all these different boxes. And you line them all up. You say, I'm a good Christian. I'm going to put Jesus right as being the first. He's the first one. He's the first box. I was rehearsing that this week. I was rehearsing that this week at home, and Jesus spoke to me and said, wait a minute, wait a minute, you, you don't get it. What? I said, Lord, I, I, I understand. You said, Gee, first, seek me first, the kingdom of God, and then all these things. He said, no, 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 that ain't it. That ain't it. He said, I don't want to be your first box. I want to be in every one of your boxes. Not only in every one of your boxes, I want to be the head of every one of your boxes. I want to be the first place in your family box. Amen. Amen. I want to be the first place in your school box. I want to be first place in your job block. block. Amen. I want to be first place in your finances. Let me have preeminence. Let me be the one you turn to when you need anything, but let me be the one who tells you what you really need. God says, I will give you the desires of your heart. And we love to quote that. We love, how many love that verse? You love, God will give you the desires of your heart. But now, there's, 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 there's a prerequisite to that. Your desires have to line up with his heart. You know that? Your desires have to line up with his heart. I can't just go out there asking thing, God for things that don't please him. Amen. He says, he says, seek ye first. He says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. And not, not that, that, that is saying, like you don't know what you need. Amen. Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden had everything. They were blessed abundantly. All the fruit trees, all everything they needed was in the garden. And God said, you can have all of it. You can have all of it, except one. Just one. Now, I don't want you messing with that one. Well, what was wrong with that one? Well, nothing was wrong with the tree. The tree was all right. But it was God's command. Amen? God was saying to them, look here, I don't want you getting into stuff that you don't need to get into. Sometimes you, our parents would tell us, well, well, look here, you don't need to be hanging with that one, or you don't need to be going to that place. And we wonder why. Because they've been there, they've seen that, and they know what can happen. Jesus knew if they had all the knowledge of good and evil, they wouldn't make bad choices. Amen? So you give them one command, don't, don't eat off that tree. And what did they do? They ate off the tree. We do the same thing. God said, don't go here, don't do that. And what we want to do, we want to go there. You tell a child, as my sister said last week, a uh, week before last in the message, that, that we tell a, fire, a child that fire is hot, they want to touch it. Amen? There's something about that, being disobedient. That's why we need Christ in the first place in our life. He comes in and directs our steps. 
He ordered us our step. So our hearts line lined up with his heart. We begin to desire the things that we that he desires. They become sweet to us. Like the word of God, it becomes sweet like honey in your mouth. Well, well, uh, well, uh, see, the thing was, God told them that they could eat off all the trees except this one. But see, Satan will do this to you. He'll try to get you to focus on the one thing that you can't do and forget about all the things that you can do. All the things that are pleasing to him, you'll forget about those and you start concentrating on the stuff, stuff that God said, ah, this is not good for you. Amen? It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Now, the, 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 that word kingdom of God, every kingdom has a king. Amen? Amen? Now, we don't know a whole lot about kingdoms in this country because we're under a quote-unquote democracy. Amen? Amen? Where people make the choices. Amen? Amen. Everybody go vote now. That's my political statement for today. Amen? Amen. But in a kingdom, there is one ruler. And Jesus in the kingdom of God is that ruler. The Bible says he is king of kings and lord of lords. That means he's over everything. He's running everything. He also said, I'm the alpha and I'm the omega. I'm the beginning and the end. There's nobody like me. Amen. Jesus says, I am king of kings, and not only that, I am lord of lords. Amen. Not only am I over everything, I'm in everything, running everything. So when you try to rebel against God, you start seeking other things to take care of your needs. He says, all right, go ahead. I'll let you go. You listen to this man. But you work it out for yourself. But if you want me working in your life, if you want me working in your, your, your business, in your, in your schoolwork, in all of these things, seek me first. Put me in the proper position. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, what does it look like when Jesus is the first in your life? When Jesus is first in your life, he has priority. Yes. How many of you know what a priority is, right? That means it's the most important thing. Priority is the most important thing. In other words, you line up what's to have the highest priority, the next priority, the next priority. The top priority, Jesus said, I mean, I have all authority in heaven and in earth. All authority is given unto me. So I am the supreme authority that makes me priority number one. When you get up in the morning, I heard Denzel Washington say this. He says, at night when you get ready to go to bed, push your shoes way up under the bed. So in the morning, in the morning when you get up, you have to get down on your knees to get them. I heard a, I heard a, I heard a, a, a gospel a gospel group saying this one time. It's hard to stumble when you're on your knees. If you start in humble submission to God, you give him rulership over that day, then the things that come that were going to come against you, he's already blocked them out. Right. He'll take you around danger seen and unseen. He'll take you through trouble on both sides, but he'll bring you right through. Start with Jesus. Not only start with him, stay with him. Amen? When Jesus is number one in your life, he cares, understand that, that he cares about everything in your life. The movies you watch, the television shows that you entertain, the music that you choose, he, he cares about all of that. Well, 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 this is fun, but see, Jesus knows the end from the beginning. He knows where that leads you, the video game. And I'm not going to leave us, us, us grandparents out either. He cares about those reality shows that we watch too. Amen. And, and all the other stuff. Amen. But he said, I'm doing it for your good. I'm doing it for your good. Because, let me tell you this. Can I share this with you? When you let something down in your spirit, 
When you let something come in, it's harder to get it out than it ever was to get in. I know even you kids. Sometimes you, you, you're walking down the, down the hallways or you're walking in your bedroom or somewhere and a song will pop up and you know that's not a godly song. And that thing is stuck in your mind. You wonder, where did that come from? Because you allowed it in. You allowed it in. Some things you just have to shut out. Grandparents, you too. Amen? Some things we have to shut out. Some things, well, I, well, when I was when I was unsaved, you know, I couldn't tell the difference. I couldn't tell the difference between what was evil and what was not evil. I depended on someone to tell me. Once I got saved, the Holy Spirit came to live inside of me. And that's that little voice that speaks to you said, uh-uh. No, no. Don't do this. Don't do that. That voice is the voice of God speaking to you. Amen. Now we are able to make good, rightly decisions in all the areas of our life. When Jesus becomes number one, he has top priority in position number one in your life. He's in every part of your life. He gets your time and your resources. Thanks be to God for all, for all these young people who came this morning and, and shared the gospel with us through song and, 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 and words. Amen. I'm just so thankful that y'all bless us this morning. Amen. 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 If you stay, if you stay, if you remain on that road, you will find success. Your friends don't know what success is. They haven't they lived long enough to know what success is. A lot of these entertainers and things we follow after, they don't know what success is. Only God knows. He says if you desire to know, if you desire wisdom, ask of God and he gives it to you. Amen? You will give God your time. Like I say, it was so wonderful that y'all gave God your time this morning. You may have been one of them. Amen. This is, this is your free day. Some of you are back in school, in, in gathering in school. Some of you are homeschooling, and you're on, a, you're on a regular routine, and I know this. And Saturday morning is probably your time to chill, too. But you decided to give God your time. Amen? All the, the others who are in here. That, that, that's giving God your time and your resources. Amen? Amen. Resources is time too. Amen? Amen? When God is first in your life in first, first position, you will give God your time and your resources. Number four. I didn't number these down. Maybe you're keeping up with me. When God is first in your life, <clears throat> Excuse me. When God, when God is first in your life, He becomes your passion. You know what a passion is? A passion is that thing that makes you shout when you don't want to shout. Amen. Make you smile when you don't want to smile. Cause you to cry tears of joy when everything else is falling around, falling down around you. You're still happy. Because you're pursuing your passion. When I was growing up, baseball was my passion. I would get outside and I would take a, a rubber ball and throw it up against old shed we had. I didn't have a lot of kids to play with, so I made my own playmate. So I put that ball up there and I could do that for hours and hours because that was my passion. My passion led me to play baseball in the semi pro league. My passion led me to play baseball in high school. My passion led me to play school, uh, baseball in college. Why? Because I went after it. It was my passion. In the same way, and I'm getting ready to close now, in the same way God wants you to go after him. He wants to be your passion. He wants you to go after him just as hard as you go after your music course, just as hard as you go after your athletics, just as hard as you go after your position on the job, your, your, your training. Go hard after God. And the Bible says he will give you the desires of your heart. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I, I don't know 
know what God has in store for you. I don't know what blessing he has, but I believe that God has amazing things lined up for you. Amazing things for your life already stored up in heaven that he's going to get down to earth to you. All you have to do is keep going hard after God. And all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Whatever you need, God's got it. Whatever you need, God's got it. Amen? Amen. Amen. I want to ask you a question. I know, I know we're getting ready to close. All this stuff going on, and we, we're losing friends and loved ones all the time. People, There's probably not a person watching this broadcast that hadn't been touched by this pandemic or the economic situation that has created all the unrest and violence. I want to ask you a question. If you didn't wake up in the morning, if you didn't open your eyes on this side of the world in the morning, do you know where you would end up? Have you made that choice to make Jesus the Lord and Savior of your life? I was blessed this week on and I'm gonna close with this. This is my last thing. I was blessed this week. Uh, uh, anybody ever did telemarketing calls? Nobody but me. Okay, no, no, tell, telemarketing. Well, they call me all the time. I guess they do. They know I'm retired. <laughs> they got all my numbers. But they call and talking about all these different things. They offering you your debt forgiveness. We want to we want to forgive all your credit card debt. All you have to do is give us your social security number. You know? So I, I got this thing that I do, you know, not, not all, but always, but when I'm in the spirit, they start, they get ready to start telling me about how they're going to save me money or how they're going, how they're going to lower my debt or eliminate my debt. I, I said, oh, this is a perfect opportunity to witness. Yes, amen. So I started amen. preaching. Yeah. I started teaching, preaching. I take them through the Roman road. And I did that, uh, I think it was last uh, Tuesday or Wednesday. I was full of the spirit, and I began to take this just just take this person on the other end through the Roman road. And I know a lot of people say, "Well, you're just talking; they're not hearing you. They're not here." But as I began to go down that road, and I was talking like I'm preaching to you, I didn't give them a chance to say that. It was, the, 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 they had an accent, so I know they weren't, weren't, weren't they weren't from Mississippi. <laughs> but something amazing when I got to the invitation part. I said, would you like to give your life to Christ this day? Yeah. The person on the end had gotten very quiet as I was talking. And they said, yes. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Yes. We miss opportunities, people. Yes. Praise God. Brothers and sisters, we miss opportunities to lead people to Christ. Amen. So right now, I want to lead you to Christ out there. If you're out there, and you haven't made that decision to have Christ in your life as your head, your Lord and Savior. It's easy. All you have to do is believe that Jesus is the Son of God. That he died for your sin. That Father God raised him from the dead. And he's ascended into heaven. He said, if you believe this with all your heart and you confess it, that means I, I believe it enough to take action about it. That action is right now, I want to pray to receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And it's simply like the Father, I, I'm a sinner. I recognize that I'm a sinner. Lord, I need Jesus to save me. Save me from my sins. I'll give my life to you. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. If you do that, you can be saved this morning. Amen? amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. today. Yeah. Yeah. Reverend Richard Johnson, we are so blessed to have part of our social ministry crew, and we are also thankful for the message. Seek yeah. Jesus first. Yeah. And you know, and that's just not for our youth. That's for the, the youth, the younger adult, the middle-aged adult, the older adult, the senior adult, 
if we just put them first, and, you know, and I, and I kind of, when I was preaching, looked back over my life, and I found, look back over my life during the, 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 the times as a student, the times as a medical student, the times as a still practicing physician, the time as a businessman, the time as a, a husband and a father. It was those times when I put him first that I find all those areas were strengthened. You know, even in marriage, a lot of people say marriage is two perfect people in love. Marriage is two imperfect people trying to find perfect love. But that perfect love can only be found if you first find a perfect God. That's it. You know, on, on our, on our our mission statement up front, it says, love God, love people, and make a difference. It didn't say make a difference, love people, love God, because once we love God first, find Him first, yes. everything else will fall in place. Yes. And if you'd like to come with us and, and love one another and love God together, you can reach out to us at pilgrimbranchchurch at gmail.com, or you also can reach out to us through Facebook or through any of our elders here. God bless you. We look forward to seeing you next week. Amen.